Okay, so test number three. <clears throat> three problems. Uh, first problem is a 2D uh, shear and moment diagram plus calculating the shear stress and the um, bending stress. Problem number two is a 3D uh, combined loading state of stress problem. And number three is uh, a stress transformation problem calculating the uh, principal stresses, orientation, sketching, and calculating the um, maximum shear stress. <clears throat> okay, so problem number one. <clears throat> We've got this beam right here. Uh, it says draw the shear and moment diagrams, calculate the normal and shear stresses at point A, uh, which is at cut AA. Uh, the cut is just to the left of this 60 kilonewton force. Point A is right here. Uh, and they tell us just below. So basically right where that top meets that middle piece, uh, but just below. All right, so uh, for statics, I, I don't knock, maybe I can real quickly. Uh, for statics, we need to find A, Y, and B, Y before we draw the shear and moment diagram. Really easy, right? Some of the moments about A. 60 is 0.5 away, creating a negative moment, but BY is 1.5 away, creating a positive moment, and so I would get, sorry, BY is 20 kilonewtons, and then summing the forces, whoops, in the Y direction, AY minus 60 plus 20, AY 40. Okay, this is 40, this is 20, two, zero. <clears throat> All right, so for the shear and moment diagrams, this one is, is very, very easy, uh, but be, you know, be ready for others that may not be this easy. <clears throat> All right, the shear diagram. First thing that happens is I go up 40, then nothing happens. Then I go down by 60, though, so where does that put me at negative 20? Then I go over here, up 20, yes, and I've got back to zero. All right, so this was the shear. The moment diagram, I'm looking for three things. I'm looking for a concentrated moment, like an applied moment, or I'm looking for an um, um, area under the shear curve, and V is the slope of M. So this first area right there, 40 by uh, 0.5, right? It's a rectangle. So this would get up to 20. This is a positive um, area under the curve. So this goes up to 20. Now, how does it get there? Well, V is a slope of M, so the slope is 40. 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 This is a constant 40, right? A um, uniform V leads to a linear, so that's a linear moment right there. <clears throat> and then this area is under the curve. It's going to be a negative area of 20 times 1. Yeah, so I would go down 20. That should be a linear straight line right there all the way to 0. <clears throat> and this value right here was 20 kilonewton meters. These are kilonewtons right there. Alright, so shear and moment diagram. Alright, and then I know that my my tau is VQ over IT. My tau is VQ over IT. And my bending stress is MY over I. Let me find this I. Was it given to us? Sometimes I'll just tell you, hey, here's the I. Uh, it wasn't given to us. <clears throat> All right, so we've got to calculate the I. This is the I about the neutral axis. Where's the neutral axis? If this wasn't symmetric, I might have to find the centroid to find the neutral axis. This is symmetric, right? This top is the same as this bottom. It's symmetric, so the I about the neutral axis. Um, I could break this up into three rectangles. Um, or I can say, and this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to say I've got a solid large rectangle minus these two smaller rectangles. So I would say that my I, the solid large rectangle, is 1 12th B 
H, let's see, what is the uh, H here? 200, uh, 1 12th BH cubed, minus 1 12th, let's see what this base would be, uh, is it 45 by 45? A 45 by 180 cubed, and there are two of them. <clears throat> so go back to the I for other types of beams. This is an I beam, we could have a U beam, we could have a rectangle. I think those are the only ones you, to, you got to uh, be ready for for problem number one. Um, and we have a formula sheet, let's see if it's attached down here. Yeah, oops. That, that ha it has some eyes here for us. Uh, let me, I need to get this. So, so you know, you, you've got these equations here, uh, but if I were you, I would try my hardest, yeah, here are all the eyes, uh, to be ready for, uh, just, just to know as much as you can beforehand. Right, 1 12th BH cubed for a rectangle. That, that you should memorize that so you don't have to scroll, uh, you don't have to go to this formula sheet for that one, but this is the formula sheet that will be on the uh, test. All right, anyway, here we go. The I, the moment of inertia, <clears throat> 22.9 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. 22.9 times 10 to the a very large value, right? And these were all millimeters, millimeters cubed, millimeters, millimeters cubed, millimeters to the fourth. Okay, now I'm ready for the VQ over IT. VQ over IT. <clears throat> the V at this cut would be 40 kilonewtons. Do you want to say 40 or 4,000 newtons? The Q. The Q, I need to look where my point is on the cross section. So for the Q, <clears throat> remember Q is the uh, first moment of area. It is Y bar prime A prime. A prime is the area away from the neutral axis. I like to start with A prime because A prime would be this area above that rectangle right there above A. So A prime would just be 10 by 100. Um, y bar prime is the distance from the neutral axis not to the point that I'm interested in but the distance from the neutral axis past the point to the centroid, so it's it's the distance from the neutral axis to that point right there, all the way up to that point right there. Uh, so I would need 90 just to get to my point, but then another 5. So I've got 95. All right, so let's say <clears throat> Q is Y bar prime, A prime. Y bar prime, we'll come back to it. This is a 10, let me put units here, by 100. A prime, and then the Y prime is 95 millimeters, or Y bar prime, 95 millimeters. All right, divided by I, 22.9 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th, and the thickness. What is the thickness? This is why it told me just below the top flange, uh, because point A, uh, the thickness is just that thickness of 10 right there. If we were just above, our thickness would be the full 100. We're just below, so thickness is 10 millimeters. And I think that's it. Do my units work out? Yeah, yeah. Newtons per, you see, 3 millimeters on the top, 5 millimeters on the bottom. Newtons per millimeter squared uh, MPA. So this would be 16.57 MPA. That is my tau. That is my tau. All right, bending moment. <clears throat> MY over I. What is the M? <clears throat> 20 kilonewton meters. Hmm. How do I want to take care of that? First, I'll, I'll say 20,000 newton meters, but I think I got to take care of the meters as well. Uh, the I is still 22.9 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. This Y is different from the Y bar prime. Don't, don't use the same one. This Y, don't overthink it. It's just the distance from the neutral axis to the point A. The distance from the neutral axis to the point A, 90 millimeters. Do my units work out? No, because of that right there. I need to get rid of meters, take care of 
change it to millimeters. The way that I do it, newtons over millimeters squared is MPA. So I just have everything as newtons over millimeters squared. So I'm left with MPA. So this would be 78.5 MPA is the sigma. All right, but I have to specify tension or compression with normal stress. I have to specify tension or compression. Is this tension or compression? <clears throat> it is a positive moment. It is a positive moment. So if I had a pool noodle and I put a positive moment on this pool noodle, it would bend like this. It would bend this way. Okay? <clears throat> so imagine all these fibers down here they're really getting stretched okay but fibers up here they're actually getting compressed fibers in the middle are neither getting stretched or compressed okay and there would be compression on the top there would be tension on the bottom point a is closer to the top and this is for a positive moment right like a smiley face um, a negative moment would be opposite all of this would be a frown, uh, but for a positive moment, the top half is compression. Sorry, for the a positive moment, the top half is compression. This is the top half. This is compression. This is compression. Now, our other way of doing this is letting the positives and negatives do our work for us. And so, <clears throat> the equation that the book gives you is negative my over I. So you would have a negative my over I before you even looked at the M, before you looked at the Y, before you looked at anything. You'd put negative my over I. So there would be negative right here. This is a positive 20,000. And this is a positive 90 because it is above the neutral axis. And so your answer would have come out negative, and that negative means compression. So this is it right here. This is what I would accept. I would accept this right here. I would also accept negative 78.5 MPA. Okay, this is what I would not accept. Don't tell me negative 78.5 and compression. Don't tell me negative and compression. That's almost like a double negative. That would be wrong. I would count that off right there. Okay, but does that make sense? Look, look back over this problem. You know, it, it'll be a beam. Uh, it probably won't be a terribly difficult, maybe a distributed load there, um, but the shear moment diagram isn't the biggest part of this problem, uh, but I do expect you to remember to be able to calculate those shear and moment diagrams. So, statics first, shear and moment diagram, and then the tau at a certain location and at a certain point, and the bending stress at a certain location and a certain point. Uh, what, one thing I'm looking for right here is the, the Y for your MY over I and the Y bar prime for your, your VQ over IT. One thing let me mention, uh, how about what if, because this will be a, lot, a, a little bit harder, <clears throat> what if it asks at this point right here? What if it asks at this point uh, let's say this is, you know, 50 millimeters above the neutral axis. <clears throat> My Y in the MY over I would be 50. The Y, the, the MY over I would not be any more difficult than it was here at A. But the Q would be. The Q would be because you've got two options. Either find this... T area, but then you need to find the centroid of that T area, or break this up into one Y bar prime A prime of that rectangle plus the Y bar prime A prime of that rectangle. And so that's what I would do. I'd break it up into two separate rectangles and do the Q for that rectangle, the Q for that rectangle, and just add them up. So that, that's definitely... Be on the lookout. Be aware, ready to do that. Uh, be able to do points that are on the bottom half. On the bottom half, uh, the tau wouldn't change much, uh, but this you know compression or this positives and negatives for the my over i would change. It would change.
Okay? Um, but anyway, I think you're, I think you're ready. This should be straightforward uh, for you.